I first discovered yin yoga because of an accident. One afternoon, I was walking through downtown Los Angeles when all of a sudden, out of the corner of my eye, I see this car racing at me very, very quickly. And in a split second, my, my brain computed that the only way that I would survive this, this accident was not to go forward or backward, side to side or down, but was to jump. And so I did. I jumped as high as I possibly could this car came underneath me, and as I came down from the jump, I hit the windshield, ricocheted off the windshield, went flying through the air, and somehow miraculously landed on my feet in the middle of this big intersection in downtown Los Angeles. Some bystanders came over to check me out, to help me get to the curb. Somebody blocks away had heard the collision and called an ambulance. And within a few minutes, the paramedics arrived. They checked me out. And other than a few gashes and a limp in my right knee, I was actually doing all right. And I was feeling blessed that I was able to escape what could have been death or some sort of serious injury. So for the weeks that followed that, I noticed that as I was walking, every time I would put weight onto my right leg, my right knee would, would give out. So I could no longer do anything athletic, couldn't jump, couldn't run. So I started to go see all sorts of doctors, chiropractors and acupuncturists and massage therapists. And although they were able to heal somewhat, it wasn't until I discovered yin yoga. And I started doing these long, deep stretches that my knees started to feel better. And after a period of several weeks, I was able to fully recover and restore the health of my knee. And not only was it better, but it was even better than it was before the accident took place. So now I could jump, I could run, and since then I've been able to go on and do trail run races, 50K in distance, half marathons and whatnot. And I attribute that to yin yoga practice and the miracle of it. So what happens is, is when we hold that long, deep stretch, we're holding it, we're in that passive, relaxed stretch, and then around 90 seconds, we experience what's called a phase change. And the phase change is where we move from the superficial muscles of the body, and we start to access the deep fascia within the body. And as we're accessing that deep fascia, we begin to stimulate these fibroblasts. And these are proteins where they lay down collagen, which increases tissue strength. And they also produce elastin, which brings elasticity to the tissue. And this is the holy grail because your connective tissue connects everything in the body from the surface of your skin all the way down to the nucleus of every single cell in the body. So it's the scaffolding that really brings the whole entire body into a state of cohesion. And when we get into that deep fascia and we're able to make it stronger, more durable, more supple, more pliable, this is the holy grail to having our fascia and our connective tissues in a state of profound health. And all of this happens just through the simplicity of holding a long, deep stretch. As is the case in many things in life, the simple things are also the most powerful.